Finally, uh, one of the most important reasons why, as you know, I can't support this project uh, is, and I've said this over and over, coming and culminating to this point, is that in the event the original estimate 90,000 trip ridership trips per day, I think it's now at 120,000, correct me, l let me know. The point I'm making, Chair members, is the entire balancing of the budget to say we won't need to raise property taxes is because 40% coming from the fare box is in ridership. So if your numbers are incorrect, if your numbers are exaggerated, if the numbers don't pan out, and you don't get to that threshold, what's your plan B so that property taxes aren't raised? If you're not getting it at the fare box and you have free parking or whatever, how are you gonna make up that money? I would just say that, uh, again, based on my professional experience and looking at the, the numbers that we have uh, here in the, uh, in the plan, and I know we have uh, disagree on, on the, the assessment of those numbers, when I look at the, the density of travel along that corridor, when I look at the success of the uh, bus as it attempts to try to get people moving through that uh, dense corridor with, with tremendous traffic, um, I believe uh, just the opposite. I think that we're going to have um, more ridership than we expect and that we're going to really see this uh, be a tremendous success because but when i read the fine print members and i get into the eis and i look at the numbers and i and i look at the gray matter and i i'm looking at promises and you know you won't need to won't need to raise your property taxes well guess what people aren't paying their sewer water bill today to the degree that they're going to be able to afford it because they're not watering their lawns they're not washing their clothes as much. They're giving up watering their uh, washing their vehicles if need be. Uh, they're, they're, they're sharing the, the toilet. Don't flush. It's that bad in each household. The, the sewer water crisis on your bill is going up in a six-year increment, and, and people right now can't pay that bill. So you say, nice to have, should have. So I made the turn. I made the turn because I said, it's more important that you flush the toilet than taking the rail want to move from recovery to prosperity, then we have to do a little bit more. We also have to build a new foundation for our future growth, for our future growth. No offense to you at all, Jim, but I mean, it's 43 years later. Why are we suddenly talking about <laughs> why magnetically levitated trains might be a good idea? Well, where, where have we been? Why is America so far behind the rail curve? Now, all of you know, this is not some fanciful pie in the sky vision of the future. It is now. It is happening right now. It's been happening for decades. The problem is it's been happening elsewhere, not here. And finally, Beijing plans to introduce Chinese-made maglev trains to ease urban traffic congestion. Municipal authorities confirmed the plan Thursday and said the goal is to cut commuting time within the city's fifth ring road to one hour by 2015. 
Maglev trains can reach a speed of up to 500 kilometers an hour, but trains in Beijing will travel at 80 to 100 kilometers an hour for passenger safety. The committee says maglevs are big improvement over subways and light rail. Two thousand three hundred and thirty-eight people we surveyed. Sixty-five said yes, they would have ridden it, and two thousand two hundred and thirty-seven said no, they wouldn't have ridden it. Would you like it that on the ballot or special election we can revisit this and you can vote again on rail because we have changes, new routes, new price tag. It's not going where it said it was going to go. When all the information has now come to light. It's been after the fact. Everything about this is not physically sound. The 450 million line of credit was after the vote. The taking of the bus funds was after the vote. The raising the debt service ceiling after the vote. The then taking the percentage of 11 to 19 percent from all transit operations after the vote. So, do you want to see another vote? Yes. 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 And that's fair, right? Yes. That's the fairest thing to do. Is government not listening to us? Right? We are the government. So if you had your way, when you go home today and you talk at the dinner table, I'm for a new vote. Who else is for the new vote? I am. You want to vote again? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> How about you, doctor? You well, want yeah. a new vote? Yeah. <laughs> Brett Pine, you want to vote again? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in support of this resolution in order to save money and uh, take advantage of the best uh, uh, technology that's available to us today. And I believe that probably is magnetic levitation. It's our money. We don't want to spend, what, 30 more years for the steel and steel? It's no good. Come on. You need some economic engine? Use the maglev. Maglev, you can put cargo in there. I'm a freight forwarder. I support the economic engine. We got to create jobs. Steel and steel, you can't put cargo in there. But Magrail is much better than steel on steel. I know that for a fact.
I support the economic engine. We gotta create jobs, skill and steel. You can't put cargo in there. But Magrail is much better than steel on steel. I know that for a fact. The reason that I feel I need to vote no is because I don't buy the argument that property taxes won't be raised. So in your group, do you really buy that argument? There absolutely will be no property tax increases as long as this rail's running. What do you think? Okay. Come on, folks. It's smart enough. You guys went to school. You know. Don't take our tax money up to 30 years. Kids are not even born. They have to spend for that. Come on. That's ridiculous. I want the rest, so go for it, folks, because we need you. You have to support our money as taxpayers. At one point, the gentleman said the public was given an opportunity to testify. That is absolutely a lie because every time they had a new series of testimony hearings, I went to them and I would get up and I'd say, I'd like to talk about monorail. And they would say, we're not here to talk about that. Next person, please. And on one occasion, a couple of guys even told me, you're not welcome here, and escorted me off of the premises because they didn't want anybody to rattle their cage. It's our money. We don't want to spend, what, 30 more years with a steel and steel? It's no good. Come on. You need some economic engine? Use the maglev. Maglev, you can put cargo in there. I'm a freight forwarder. I support the economic engine. we got to create jobs. Steel and steel, you can't put cargo in there. Maglev is much better than steel on steel. I know that for a fact. The reason that I feel I need to vote no is because I don't buy the argument that property taxes won't be raised. So in your group, do you really buy that argument? There absolutely will be no property tax increases as long as this rail's running. What do you think? Okay. Come on, folks. It's smart enough. You guys went to school. You know. Don't take our tax money up to 30 years. Kids are not even born. They have to spend for that. Come on. That's ridiculous. I want the rest, so go for it, folks, because we need you. You have to support our money as taxpayers. At one point, the gentleman said the public was given an opportunity to testify. That is absolutely a lie, because every time they had a new series of testimony hearings, I went to them, and I would get up, and I'd say, I'd like to talk about monorail. And they would say, we're not here to talk about that. Next person, please. And on one occasion, a couple of guys even told me, you're not welcome here and escorted me off the premises because they didn't want anybody to, to rattle their cage. And other alternatives were not given uh, uh, the opportunity to present clear and viable solutions to an obsolete technology that served the 19th century but not the future needs of the 21st century. I believe it's the transit authority's responsibility to make sure that we get the most economical and best product that's out there. So I support this bill. If maglev or monorail were advanced, A, doesn't delay the rail project, B, you still get the federal dollars, C, it's less expensive to the taxpayer, most importantly, your quality of life's improved because you don't have the noise. I have to put my two cents in because I love trains. But the kind of trains I like is the old choo-choo train that I used to ride from Kapalama all the way down to Kahuku. Now, that's what you call a train. What, you, what with the initiating and putting is an earache. We have a better way to do this, Chair, members. We really do. And it won't be a waste of taxpayers' dollars. It will be a savings. Thank you, Council Member Burke. Members, any further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I've met with the Federal Transit Administration, who is our federal overseer on Honolulu's mass transit project in Washington, D.C., a number of times. I've asked the question of the FTA that if for some reason 
this body should place on the 2012 general election ballot a question regarding Honolulu's mass transit project. And if that question should be in conflict with the 2008 ballot question regarding steel on steel that passed, could we perhaps be in jeopardy of the federal government requiring Honolulu to reimburse the upwards of $200 million that the federal government has given us thus far for our project? The answer from the FTA was yes. They would come back to Honolulu and they would require us to repay every cent that they have given us thus far for this project. Mr. Chairman, that's a grave concern for me. And that's not a hypothetical, Mr. Chairman. That's a definitive. The federal government has assured me that if, in fact, the charter amendment like this passes, they will indeed come back and require us to repay them. That's not an assumption. It's a fact. It came from the FTA themselves. In light of that fact, Mr. Chairman, I am unable to support this particular measure moving forward at this time. I, I think the implications are great. I believe that it's a certainty that the federal government will in fact require Honolulu and our taxpayers to reimburse them for the federal monies that have been expended on our project thus far. And Mr. Chairman, those consequences will be dire to the people of the city and county of Honolulu. Therefore, uh, Mr. Chairman, I will not be able to support this going forward at this time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Vice Chairman. Members, any further discussion? Short, one minute. One minute um, I just want to bring to everyone's attention that uh, the Chancellor of UH West Oahu, um, Awakuni, uh, the rail was first pitched and sold to the taxpayer that rail would go from university to university and it would have a station on the actual campus of UH West Oahu. It turned out that the Chancellor pleaded and says, don't put that steel wheel, steel rail on my campus. And so we didn't. So now rail doesn't go to UH West Oahu for reason, for a reason. And now I'm gonna tell you this, if we went with Maglev, you could put that station in the library. You could actually not disturb us all. That's the kind of quality of life I'm asking for, Chair members. And by the way, I disagree with, uh, respectfully, Councilmember Anderson, albeit it may be that the FTA would say they do one or the other, but um, that's, that's not my understanding, um, because Hart's already in motion, the dedicated tax is there, the federal fundings come, no matter what we do, Hart already can put Maglev on that elevated fixed guideway tomorrow. They already have it. If we were to do the EIS over again, it's a six months. That's well before, well before, federal monies come in in September 2012 at the earliest. So again, I'm pleading with all of you to, to let you know that, yeah, it's first reading. If you passed it off, uh, it could go to committee and then, and then chew this thing up. Chew this thing up in committee members and shut it down. That's fine. But again, this is a Hail Mary pass. I got four wide receivers going downfield all on one side, and I'm whipping this thing up in the end zone. I'm hoping someone catches it because I'm the guy throwing the ball here, members, and I think it's a good pass, and I think it's catchable, and it's a touchdown for everybody, including the taxpayer. Mahalo. Thank you, Council Member Burke. And uh, with that said, members, I'm going to continue um, to advocate um, that the award with Ansaldo uh, we scrutinize. I'm going to continue to advocate the state legislature not take a 10% fleecing off the cut. Uh, and I'm going to continue to advocate that when the voters voted for this, that it went to Salt Lake and it didn't. I'm going to continue to advocate that when the price tag in the 08 vote was $3.7 billion and it's changed. I'm going to continue to advocate, members, that when this was sold to us, it would go to, from campus to campus to UH Manoa. Uh, it's a $9 billion price tag. I'm going to continue to make sure that every penny spent on this twist and turn with you in concert, members, not to be a friction, not to be antagonistic. I do this in good faith with you. I am here to make sure that the voters get the best rail product they can. And I hope I add a little flavor to this council so that we just pause for a moment. The, the reason that I have to again vote no is because everything about this is not physically sound. The 450 million line of credit was after the vote. The taking of the bus funds was after the vote. The raising the debt service ceiling, after the vote. 
they're then taking the percentage of 11 to 19% from all transit operations after the vote. And what you've just been told by the HART director is that the ridership is maybe even going to exceed. Now, remind you, remember this, Minneapolis, Portland, Charlotte, Denver, Phoenix, cities with a bigger demographics geographically than us. It didn't pan out, and guess who eats it and makes up the difference? The taxpayer. And so at this time, I'm going to conclude with there's no mechanism in here. There's no language. I know you can't uh, hold future councils accountable for this, but there should be something in here that says we guarantee there'll be no property tax. None. There will absolutely, once you go down on this, there will be no coming back and raising property taxes. And if you don't know and you're not sure, then this isn't a good deal. Because right now, I think it's more important we be able to flush our toilet, pay that sewer EPA mandate, and that's the issue at hand. This is a nice to have project, and if it were monorail, if it were maglev, it'd be a third of the price. We could go to UH Waikiki, it would be a better bang for your buck. But the steel wheel, steel rail, archaic behemoth, noisy, is not the solution. So when I first saw rail, I saw this go Thank downhill you, fast. Burr. Thank you, Council Member. Vote Burr. no. Members, any objections to adopting resolution 12 322? Noting one objection from Council Member Burr. All nine council members, rail transit supporters and opponents alike, voted to override the mayor's vetoes. We're held accountable. We're the ones that have to answer to why these cost overruns continually, continually are in front of us. Bring out your dead. 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 your dead bring out your dead bring out your dead
This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end of our elaborate plans. The end of everything that stands. The end, no safety. I'll never look into your eyes again Can you picture what will be so limitless and free Desperately in need of some I move that committee report 385 and resolution 12-318 be adopted. For the second. Second motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. For the explanation, Councilmember Burke. Recognizing the cultural, historic, and scientific value of the karst freshwater aquifer ecosystem of the Eva Plains, West Oahu. Okay, do you have a further motion? I do, Chair, please. I move to further amend resolution 12-318 to an FD1. Okay, do we have a second to the FD1? Okay, seeing no second to the, F, the proposed motion to amend to the FD1, that motion has failed. Any further motions? Councilmember Garcia. Mr. Chairman, I move to defer resolution 12 318 at the discretion of the chair. Second the motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Chairman, before we actually vote on this, I need to uh, declare Council Communication 360 has been filed with the clerk. Out of the abundance of caution, I'm filing this disclosure as the Executive Director of the Copley Chamber of Commerce. I'm not quite sure what the impacts are going to be on the members, but I do this anyway. Mr. Chairman, oh, are we in discussion? No, no, we, we're <laughs> going to take testimony first. Okay. okay, anyone seeking to offer testimony on Resolution 12 318? This is your time, sir. Please state your name for the record, offer your testimony. My name is Lance Ratayli Lincoln. Um, I support this bill. Please pass this one. You know, this, we have to protect Hawaiian culture. We have to protect our sacred sites, all of them. This place is a very sacred place. My ancestors buried there, in these caves. Please, protect. I respect you, all of you. Respect yourselves and all of us also, please. That's all I ask. Yeah. Thank you. This is identified as a burial aho, simply because when the archeologists uh, did a subsurface excavation, took all these stones from the, the Ahu, set it on the side. He found a full set of human remains just below that first layer of stone. So when he discovered that they were at Ivikupuna, what he did was that he just put back one layer of stones. So it's identified as a burial Ahu. Our manao behind that is that more likely than not that this person was probably a very respected person to be buried inside a, a structure that was used for for prayers this this last structure is identified in the uh, archaeological survey as a uh, every as a religious structure 
There's several aspects of this structure that, that is considered religious in nature. One is this large stone at the entrance of this first hole. Originally that, that stone would have been standing up. So it's identified as a ki'a'i or a ki'i as a guardian over the entrance to that hole. The second feature that makes it religious, this is a religious structure. You can see the upright stone just beneath the ki'a'i tree directly in front laying down is the ki'a'i or the ki'i that would have been standing up originally. Uh, that would have served as a guardian over that elevated platform right in the middle where you see the cone standing in the survey that's identified as an elevated platform or a place where whoever was facilitating prayer would have stood. The main point of the resolution really uh, and why we took, did an FD1 and took a ton of stuff out of it was because it's just really just saying, uh, recognizing the cultural, historic, and scientific value of the karst of the Eva Plains west of Oahu. But this obviously is a big hot button for developers and, and well drillers and people like that because they really came out against it. It's an underground water system that has humongous ramifications on development. Public Land Development Corporation, Section 106, development on the Eva Plains, Second City, rail, you name it. Everything's in play. We really urge us not to move this along. If your intent, however, is, as you stated, to pass this out, I will definitely vote no. Thank you. came out against it, and uh, they're against the use of the word karst, which uh, we've, we talked to hydrologists, geologists, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the DLNR Aquatics Group, they all said this is karst. There's uh, shrimp living out there. You can dig a hole in the ground and, and shrimp will appear just by themselves uh, 500 yards inland from the shoreline. So it's quite an active area and all the things we said in the original one we really think are true and accurate. But in order to just not rattle anyone's cage, we just took all the stuff out and said just let's make it real simple. Uh, we just want to have it. Uh, cultural, historic, scientific value of the car should be studied. It's, um, it's a big deal in the mainland. It creates a lot of uh, tourism and uh, interest. There's a Hawaiian cultural uh, side to this that's important. Um, and there's a natural ecosystem side of it. So therefore, um, the FD1 is really, really, really a harmless, bland thing. And it's hard to believe people would be against voting for it. So thank you very much. When you pass fresh water, over coral, limestone, it dissolves the coral. So it creates a whole series of caves and cars. It carries nutrients in the same manner. As the water is traveling from the higher elevation to the lower elevation, it's carrying all those nutrients. And when the water hits the flatland, it deposits all that, that soil. Water is traveling in the same manner as a traditional river, however, you cannot see it. Right where we're standing, we're standing on the banks of a river that cannot be seen. The soil marks the bank of the river. The center of the river is marked by no soil and a presence of rock. We're at the site of a, a structure that's identified in the archaeological survey as a water sinkhole. We've actually had, if you can imagine, we actually walked inside of a river to get to this, this structure. The water that was in this sinkhole was used to drink and to take a bath in. So the water was clean, which also means that the water had to be moving. They would not have taken a bath or drank standing water. This is actually the location of the center of the river. If you just think about what a traditional river looks like, the cleanest water is in the center where the water is moving fast. There's no soil. The rushing water removes all the soil and debris. All you have is boulders at the bottom of the river. This trail is built in a Tahitian manner as supported by all the upright stones. This trail was first identified 
by Lieutenant Molden, who was a map maker on board George Vancouver's ship back in the 1790s, when Vancouver and Molden were charting the, the shorelines of the island of Oahu and also the other islands. It was at that time he named the Hawaiian Islands the uh, Sandwich Islands. He identifies this trail. Uh, this trail uh, originates at a place called Kualakai along the shoreline. And this trail actually goes four miles and it connects this region with Kalo'i Gulch and also Honu'uli'uli Uli Gulch. State your name for the record. And my name is Perry White. I did submit written testimony on this and I'm just going to say a few short things from that. Go ahead, that. sir. Um, in early 1970, I was a teacher at the University of Hawaii Laboratory School when I watched a TV program that featured Dean McCarg. He's author of Design with Nature, a seminal book on environmental planning, and what he had to say made such eminently good sense. I was just an instant convert to it. I went off to the University of Pennsylvania, was able to get a master's degree in regional planning, and returned to Hawaii in 1973, been working as an environmental planner ever since then. Um, what most attracted me to McCarg's approach was the idea that paying careful attention to what science has to tell you about the natural environment can lead to better decision making and wiser resource management. It's just, it's just so clear that that's what you ought to do that. What I find upsetting about this resolution is that it contains so many scientific inaccuracies that it doesn't form the kind of sound basis that we all want. Um, and I, I feel personally that if you were to adopt this resolution in its present form, it would do far more harm than it would good. So, and I, I think it would make it much more complicated for the agencies that are charged with protecting this resource to do a good job. Personally, I think that the existing provisions of regulations are adequate to do the job, but let's say I'm wrong, um, and, I, and I am wrong from time to time. Um, as, um, I, I just don't think that as presently written, this resolution will approve the ability to protect those parts of the resource that are valuable. Um, this is not an emergency. The council has time to look at the provisions that it's got in this res resolution to think about what it's trying to accomplish and to revise it to make it do what it is intended to do. I hope it will take that time and not adopt the resolution as presently written. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your testimony. Council Member Burke has a question for Mr. you. Mr. White? Yes. yes. I just want to let you know as the Chair of Parks, uh, when we um, deliberated on this, uh, I read your testimony in great detail and amended it. So it went through a revision to follow all your terminology. Then with that, we did another floor draft. And on that floor draft, we have the Board of Water Supply that found further terminology issues. So I further amended this. And there's a hand-carried uh, FD1 that we're not no longer deliberating. I didn't get a second. But I'd just like you to know that uh, everything that you've brought forward, and thank you for your testimony at length at the committee, uh, was adhered to, adopted, and incorporated. And so my question to you would be, this resolution does not protect anything. It doesn't preserve anything. It just says they're out there, a karst system, and by being out there, a karst system, how about telling the city administration, state of Hawaii, the United States governments are urged to, United States government are urged to recognize and further study. So basically, you're saying that you object to further study the cultural, historic, and scientific opportunities. Because again, in your testimony, this doesn't protect this doesn't spend money, it doesn't preserve anything, it has no value, it just says, just says, after all the corrections were made, taking heed to the Board of Water Supply and you, so the question is, clarification, you're against further studying of the karst system on the other plane. Um, I, I am against uh, adopting a resolution that in, in the form that I saw it, and I saw the FD1 version, I think. Now, if there's a subsequent one, then perhaps I haven't seen it. Um, but that contains so many things that I believe are not scientifically accurate that if I, as a planner, and I, I do look to guidance from regulations, from resolutions, from all sorts of things when I'm trying to do my job. So if I go back to something and it contains things that aren't 
accurate in it and I'm trying to resolve all of this, it makes it very difficult for me as a planner to do the kind of job that I want to do. So what I'm saying is I, I don't believe um, that this is present, as presently written accurately represents what is out on the EVA plane. And we could go into long details in this. And, and I've been involved out there for a long time, in, including with working with Dr. Ziegler, who helped on uh, realigning the coal conveyor, for example, or AES project that I was involved in. Um, so I pay attention to that kind of stuff. I'm, a, I'm, I'm pretty aware of the whole ankylene situation out there because I've done work on that, both on the big island and on this island. I've worked on establishing preserves. So I'm not a developer's pocket boy on that. I really do want to do the right kind of job. And I don't think this is where it needs to be. And I think that more thought ought to go into the way that it's written if you want it to do the job it set out for. Thank you. Okay, any further questions for the testifier? Council Member Kobayashi. Thank you. Well, do you th feel it's important to have um, a resolution that's accurate? I absolutely feel it's important to have Not a resolution. Not that it's accurate, but do you think it's um, important to have a resolution that will accomplish? I, I don't know. Um, as long as it contains the accurate information. I, I think it's important that, that if you're going to undertake something, that it be based on a correct understanding of the situation. It's only if you have that kind of understanding that you can, you can adopt a wise regulation or, take, or make any wise decisions, I think. So, yeah, I think, I think we should take time, I think not we, but you should take time to, to get it right. Um, if this were an emergency situation, um, I, I might sort of side on the version, yeah, well, okay, well, yeah, that's not exactly right, but let's go ahead. I don't see the emergency here. I think it's important to get it right. I think if you get it right, you'll serve the public better. For the EVA planes? For the EVA plane. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions for the testifier? I have a quick follow-up. Very quick follow-up. Okay. Go I, ahead. I, 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 yeah. What I did is I struck out. There's about four whereas clauses that have been removed. Um, if I can, Clerk, you did uh, very, very quickly. Just name one, one inaccuracy in here. Can you, can you point it out for me? What whereas clause do you object to that is inaccurate? Um, let's see. Well, I, I don't know what's in the... Okay. Um, let's see. You've got a whereas the Eva Plains Karst is a hydrologically connected waterway and natural aquifer filtering system that transfers nutrients and et cetera, that one. Um, I, I listed a number of, of things about that. Um, most solution sinkholes and solution channels are not interconnected with one another. Uh, in localized areas where they are well connected, they don't provide natural aquifer filtering because when they're connected, the water flows really quickly and the whole filtering aspect doesn't happen. Um, uncontrolled points of, of pollution, of course, are always bad, not just when they're karst, and there's nothing particular about the karst that makes that thing. Um, the karst is not, so far as I know, particularly important insofar as transferring nutrients and organic carbon to downstream food webs. And finally, there isn't anything in the resolution that, that improves regulators' ability to do anything about all of that. So again, um, I don't want to downplay the fact that the karst on the Eva Plain is relatively unique in the Hawaii setting. It is also quite different from the kind of karst settings that, that are found in the, that have the very large caves uh, in the Midwest. Um, discussion here was from the fact that it might be a, a, a tourist attraction, for example. I think there's testimony or written stuff from the Speleological Society that says the kinds of caves you have here really aren't suitable for that. If, um, if I can interrupt you, Mr. White, uh, very quickly, Chair, I don't believe the testifier, Mr. White, has the version that I'm referencing. Everything that he just pointed out, I, 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 don't, I don't have that. I don't think he has time to really read it. Yeah, we need to uh, move I, on. I, uh, Councilmember Again, I, I don't want to go too far on this. Every, everything he just said is not in this resolution. You can save that for discussion, sir. Not in this Any resolution. further questions for the testifier? No further questions. Anyone else seeking to offer a testimony on resolution 12-318? Thank you, sir. Please state your name for the record and offer your testimony. My name is Tom Nance. I'm a registered and practicing civil engineer in the state of Hawaii. Uh, I've been working on groundwater issues in EVA since the early 1980s. 
started to focus on it very intensively uh, early in 1993 when Oahu Sugar uh, announced their closing and an opportunity to see major changes in groundwater occur as a result of uh, stopping pumping on one hand and stopping the importation of sweeter, sweeter water on the other. Um, since I've been working out there, just a quick tally, I think there's been about 110 production wells, monitor wells, and exploratory boreholes that have been done over that period of time. More than 70 of those were done at my direction. And for the other 40 or so, I have intimate knowledge of, of their um, construction and the conditions that were encountered. I have and continue to monitor groundwater out there with uh, continuous water level recording stations since early 93. And I also monitor salinity profiles and some deep monitor wells we have out there. So I really think that in the last 30 years or so, or actually I know, may I continue? <laughs> yeah, please sum up, please. Nobody has the kind of data that I have to characterize groundwater out there in EVA. I have had a discussion with Mr. Bond over the phone. You may or may not be aware of that, Councilman Burke. There are still, and I'm, again, like the version that Perry looked at, you may have cleaned it up further. The version I've looked at did clean it up some. But still, to characterize groundwater occurrence of movement out there as movement of streams through interconnected karst features, these are solution cavities created by acetic rainfall or acetic runoff pooling and dissolving the limestone. That's just not how the groundwater moves. That's just not how we develop it. And, and to show you, of the 70 wells that I've personally been in charge of having uh, put in out there, not a single one in the groundwater environment Harbor. And my objection, I'm not objecting to studying, I'm simply saying get the description of groundwater correct. And it, the version that I've read so far isn't. Thank you, sir. Members, any questions for the testifier? No questions, thank you. Anyone else seeking to offer a testimony on resolution 12-318? Anyone else? Seeing no one, members, we are in discussion. Members, we are in discussion. Remember, the motion on the floor is to defer. Discussion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, in support of my motion to defer, and the compelling testimony of the previous, the last two testifiers is enough to give what I would hope yourself, Mr. Chairman, uh, the person who would run the committee with jurisdiction on this matter, um, and for all stakeholders to come together and try to see to it that if this resolution in some form or fashion can advance, be it a resolution that actually has everyone uh, participating in the discussion and drafting the language that I think will sync up with the intent of what the resolution would have you do out here on the Eva Plain. So uh, the, the motion to defer does not kill the intent of this, Mr. Chairman. I would just like to have yourself and your new counsel to take a closer look at this resolution. Perhaps if it is drafted in a way that everybody can reach a consensus with, then perhaps we can move it forward. I don't want to kill it necessarily outright. Give this opportunity another, another give this resolution another opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion, members? No further discussion? Members, any objections on deferring resolution 12-318? Voting objection from Council Member Berg. Any reservations, members? Noting no reservations, committee report 385 and resolution 12-318 has been deferred. I don't know if that looks familiar. That's the header for this brochure. And it was the top of an eight-page glossy brochure the city distributed throughout the island in mid-2008. Its goal was to convince everyone not that familiar with what was going on at Honolulu Hale that the term rail was the same as steel wheels on steel rails. 
It was a piece of propaganda aimed at voter support in November that year, and it successfully gained a 53-47% margin of victory. But are steel wheels the only rail? This information can be found in the Federal Transit Administration website glossary. On the slide, NTD stands for the National Transit Database. The point is that the city's effort in 2008 was deliberately deceptive and attempted to arbitrarily eliminate other technologies accepted by the FTA as rail. There are several forms of rail and the city knew it. However, I am not sure the voters were aware how they were being manipulated. In fact, some people locally believe that FTA will not support automated guideway or monorail systems. So let me disprove that. So what happened was, is we as a citizenry said, do something. So we passed rail in 08. And what rail was in 08 was, they said, steel on steel is going to be it. Like it, take it, or leave it. I concur with some that believe that maglev, alternative technologies, the Evan Neighborhood Board, by the way, supported rubber tire and concrete and wanted emergency service, front door service looked at in this alternative analysis. So the Eva Beach Neighborhood Board did not even adopt or support steel on steel. We would like something else delivered.